Ever wondered what happens when a dumb Karen gets caught in the act in public? This video captures the moment as her entitled behavior leads to a public arrest, showcasing the consequences of pushing the boundaries. Let's start with this lady woke up at the gas pump and decided to throw a fit. On May 11th, 2023, police received a call about a woman that fell asleep in her car after purchasing wine at a gas station. Initially, the officers approach Rhonda calmly, expressing concern for her well-being and attempting to assess her condition. Hold on. Put your window down. However, Rhonda immediately becomes defensive, denying she was asleep and insisting she was only parked and watching videos on TikTok. Um, I, I heard you were sleeping here. Oh, there it goes. Who said I was sleeping? The people working here said you were sleeping. I wasn't sleeping. I was sitting here looking at TikTok. This assertion contradicts witness reports and sets off a chain of interactions marked by defiance and frustration. Oh, here they got the ambulance. Hey, 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 okay, hey, you don't have hey, to get hey, upset. Hey. You don't have to get upset. We're just making sure you're okay. I am not passed out. I just looked at TikTok. I look at TikTok and, hey, I'm sitting here looking at TikTok. As the dialogue continues, the officers try to administer standard procedures, such as requesting her driver's license and conducting sobriety tests. Is your li driver's license in your purse? My driver's license on my phone. Oh, oh. Is your driver's license? I just need to see the, the hard excuse copy. Me, excuse me, excuse me. Rhonda's responses fluctuate between erratic explanations and outright refusals, exacerbating the officer's suspicions of intoxication. I ain't drank no grind, just got off work. Rhonda, be honest, come on. You didn't just get off of work because it's not even 3.30 yet. You told me you got off at 3.30. I told you I just got off work. Of and I asked you Who what are time? You? Who are you? Deputy hey. answering. I asked you what time you got off work, you said 3.30. And it was one o'clock. I didn't say her failure to cooperate with basic instructions, like rolling down her window or exiting the vehicle, fuels the officer's determination to investigate further. Why are you refusing to get out of the car? I am. I don't even really like talking to you. Don't you. It's the way you're talking to me. Okay, well, I've been trying to deal with you for a long time. You ain't time got here. to you're deal not... with me. You ain't got to deal with me. Yeah, we do. Oh. Despite repeated attempts to reason with Rhonda and de-escalate the situation, tensions rise as she adamantly resists compliance. Arrest for DUI. I, I ain't got the truth. Why are you doing this? I used to go, I had bad things. Why are you doing this? The officers, maintaining a measured demeanor throughout, continue to outline their concerns and the implications of her actions. I just gave you a list of everything. Okay. You, don't, you, you just don't like me, right? I don't even know you. Rhonda's behavior, including her repeated claims of innocence and occasional appeals to personal circumstances like health issues, adds layers of complexity to the encounter. Please, Rhonda, you why? did it to yourself. Step out of the car. No! Come on. Rhonda, don't do We're this. not going to start this. Despite her emotional pleas and attempts to divert the conversation, the officers persist in their efforts to enforce the law, ultimately leading to her arrest. If you go to jail, you are not there all day. You're not there permanently. You can get bonded you out. You understand. No, you understand. You understand what I'm going to do. You understand. I'm trying to work with you. I understand, I understand. what you're going through. I understand you're going through a tough time. She faced charges for obstructing an officer and resisting arrest, alongside allegations of driving under the influence of alcohol. Her bond was established at $300. She should have been charged with creating a public disturbance due to her disruptive behavior and refusal to comply with law enforcement. Okay, I don't want you to fall. I'm just gonna hold on to you so you don't fall. I don't want you to touch me. That's it. I don't want, I don't want to stop. Hey, hey you, need, you, know, you know you need to go with these guys. Don't put up no problem because this is going to get another charge. Her actions, which included arguing with officers, resisting arrest, 
and causing a scene at the gas station disrupted public order and necessitated police intervention. I don't you are not driving from here. Uh -oh. <laughs> no. No! Shut the car off now! Shut the car off! This charge would have reflected the impact of her actions on the surrounding environment and the need to maintain public safety and orderliness in such situations. All right, let's move to this next part where a terrified 26-year-old kicks cop after being body slammed. On February 15th, 2024, the incident begins with officers noticing a defective tail light on the woman's vehicle, prompting them to initiate a traffic stop. You have a tail light that's missing on the back? Did you know about that? However, right from the start, communication barriers become apparent as the woman struggles to hear and comprehend the officer's instructions due to ambient noise. Insurance. Where are we coming from? Literally, I just told you. I, I can't hear you real well out here, I'm sorry. sorry. I just told you, I just came from that side of the building. I was coming around to this side without having to pass by the guy who was coming. Okay. This initial miscommunication sets a tone of frustration and misunderstanding between the parties involved. That's my partner. Why does he look? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. He's, no one's gonna break into your truck. Well, she think she says it looks like you're gonna break into her truck. As the officers proceed to conduct a routine check, including a potential search with a drug-sniffing dog, based on their reasonable suspicion, the woman's discomfort and suspicion escalate. I'm gonna have you step out, and I'll explain the written warning to you. Okay? Yeah, you are going to step out of the car, though. I'd like to know why. I have uh, so the reason why is I'm stopping you. This is a traffic stop, okay? okay that's At, not my I'm not. Good. I'm not searching your vehicle. What we're going to do is called a free air sniff with the dog. She questions the necessity and legality of the search, expressing her unease and reluctance to comply. Okay, I'm still going to explain the paperwork. You can't be in the vehicle while we're conducting the snap. That's why I'm having you exit the vehicle. I'll explain the documents while the dog goes around and we'll proceed forwards from there. Her skepticism towards the officer's motives and actions adds fuel to the already tense situation. What it, I have reasonable suspicion to think that some other criminal activity is happening in my presence. The turning point occurs when the officers insistently request the woman to step out of her vehicle, which she adamantly refuses. Okay. I'm going to ask you one more time to step out of the car. We're going to remove you from the car. This refusal leads to heightened tensions, with the officers attempting to physically remove her from the car. Yep, yeah, you're, you're all set. I'm out of the path. I, I promise you, you're not going to hit me with the door. In her fear and desperation, the woman kicks out at one of the officers, prompting a swift and forceful response. Stop! What are you doing? Get away from me! What are you doing? Stop! Get away from me! We are on your back. What the? The officers restrain her, using physical force to subdue and eventually arrest her for interference. That's not cool. Get away from me! What the? What the? I didn't even do anything! I will come. Give me a second. I was trying to get away from you! I, yeah, that's you guys are nuts! What the fuck? Just sniff my car and let me go to sleep! She was charged with assault on a peace officer and interference with official acts. I kick you the written warning and you're good to go. But it, it kind of turned into a whole well, show and fiasco. Very disrespected. I I feel like I tried everything in my power to be as respectful and cordial it's and work with you as much as I could. The, the police are sometimes a little bit of an exception to that. Or actually, yeah. the police say, I'm not trying to, I don't want to get into a debate about that, but you know, we're not trying to hurt you. We're not trying to. In Ohio, offenses such as assault on a peace officer and interference with official acts are delineated under specific chapters of the Ohio Revised Code, 
ORC, which outline their definitions and penalties. For assault on a peace officer, this offence falls under Chapter 29, 03, Assault and Related Offences of the ORC. Depending on the severity, if the assault causes serious physical harm to the officer, it can be charged as a felony offence. Felonious assault carries penalties that may include imprisonment for up to eight years and fines. For interference with official acts, this offence is typically covered under Chapter 2921, Offences Against Justice and Public Administration of the ORC. Interference with official acts can also range in severity, depending on the circumstances. Penalties can include fines and imprisonment, with the severity of the penalties often dependent on whether the interference was passive resistance or actively obstructive in nature. That girl was quite out of control, but wait until you see this next case where an extremely intoxicated pregnant woman gets a DWI. On November 26, 2022, around 9.10 p.m., patrolman Brett Kyle of the Howell Township Police Department responded to Winterbury Court following a report of a suspicious vehicle. Do you see that you're near? What's that for? Hi. Hey. How you doing? Hey. What's going on here? Hi. The caller had observed the driver honking the horn and operating the vehicle. Man. What is your name? What is it? What? Lauren. Man, no. What? Man, no. Oh. Patrolman Kyle arrived at the scene by 9.20 p.m. and approached the driver, identified as Lauren, in a Ford Escape. Hey, sir, do we have any 10 for the mother? Look at this go. Ma'am, what are you doing here? She's toasted. What? I'm not doing the same thing. Oh, all right, that's for Inside the vehicle, he discovered empty wine bottles and detected the strong odor of alcohol emanating from Lauren. <laughs> Three wine bottles, empty. One full still. Lauren appeared incoherent and initially denied drinking, claiming she was pregnant. And Matt call. Who's Matt? Oh man. Huh? Can you step out? However, due to the visible signs and smell of alcohol, patrolman Kyle determined she had likely driven under the influence. He proceeded to attempt field sobriety exercises, but due to Lauren's heavily intoxicated state, he decided it was unsafe to continue. Patrolman Kyle opted to transport her to Centra State Medical Center for evaluation, with the intention of obtaining a blood draw through a telephonic search warrant. This weekend's just amazing. We're finally getting busy again on evenings. It's been so amazing. So I love amazing. it. It's awesome. Bro, it's been it's like so since before COVID. We haven't done yeah. shit on eves. Yeah. yeah. Emergency responders arrived shortly thereafter, and Lauren was taken to the hospital. Patrolman Kyle promptly contacted Assistant Prosecutor Jessica Sperano of the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office to request a telephonic search warrant for the blood draw. Luster, bro. It's a high speed yeah. Didn't try my shoes. I mean, me either. So, that's what it is. The warrant was granted by SCJ James Newman. Following the incident, Lauren was issued summonses for operating under the influence, OUI, reckless driving, driving while suspended, and driving with an expired driver's license. Court proceedings on March 3rd, 2023, saw Lauren pleading guilty to OUI. As part of the plea agreement, her driver's license was revoked for four months. She was mandated to attend a 12-hour intoxicated driver resource center required to use an ignition interlock device for nine months and fined a total of $690. The other three citations 
were dismissed. Approximately a year later, on February 8th, 2024, Lauren was arrested again for DWI, marking a subsequent offence following her previous conviction. All right, fellas, what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more interesting and educational content.